Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and today we're going to be looking at the M421B Brazilian Bulldog. I had a few people asking for this review, uh, a few asking for the Scorpion as well, so I ended up doing the uh, the footage for both, flipped a coin at the end of the day uh, to see which I'd actually do, uh, do a review of and the Bulldog won. So I have got the footage for the Scorpion and give you a bit of a hint with it, it's basically got one mil of armour all round, so you stay out of the way use other people to spot for you and yeah work the ridge lines um, when you do you have basically you're only really showing your gun and your gun shield over the ridge lines so that's my sort of tips for the scorpion for now uh, until I can actually get a proper review out of it um, but anyway we're here to talk about the M41 Brazilian Bulldog what is it well basically it's the the Bulldog the tier 7 uh, American light tank up at tier 8 with the stock 90mm from the T49. Now it's a bit of a different 90mm and we'll go into that in just a moment. Now there are a few differences between the uh, this one and the other Bulldog but we'll just have a look at how much it is in the store. It's I think it's only there, whoa, I'm going the wrong way and I sounded like the professor off the Simpsons then. Um, right, let's have a look. Brazilian Bulldog. I think it might still be there tomorrow. Hopefully it will be anyway. If not, the people who've got this, well, you'll know how to do it. And uh, Otherwise, then you'll know whether you want to buy it next time it comes around, if it is gone, unfortunately. But it's 7,800 gold, which is, I don't know, it, tier 8 light tank. For a tier 8, it's not too bad, but then again, you can get a tier 8 medium for that. Uh, for a little bit more, even a little bit less, actually, you can get the type 59. And if it was between the two, type 59 every every time now this is possibly I've had this one a while maybe the only tank I actually regret buying possibly I mean it's grown on me a little bit today but I've not really driven it much and like I say that for me personally it's possibly yeah the the only tank premium tank I actually regret buying there are a, f a couple that I've bought just to review a couple of the cheaper ones but yeah this is one that I bought for myself and wasn't really keen. Now, the differences between this and the standard Bulldog. Right, standard one gets a 550 horsepower engine. This gets 510. Now, that doesn't sound like much, much, yeah, much of a difference when I can uh, speak English again. But you've got to remember, this has slightly more armour on the front. So that makes it a slightly heavier vehicle, which does affect the power to weight ratio. We'll cover that a little bit more in a minute. Let's talk about the gun. Um, like I say, it's up at tier 8. It's the uh, same gun as the stock T49. Now, it, health point-wise, while we're going into it, it's got a bit more than the Bulldog, a bit less than the T49. Now, gun, very odd 90mm. It doesn't have armour piercing. It has HEP rounds, which are high-explosive, high-penetration rounds, and they're the standard ammunition on this. 9.52 rounds a minute, which is the same as the T49, uh, 102 penetration, and 320 average damage. Now, remember this is a 90mm, so your average damage is normally 240, and these are HEP, high explosive, high penetration, so even if they don't penetrate, they still will do some splash damage. Your premium ammunition are heat rounds, 250 and 240, that's penetration damage, and then 45 and 320 for your standard HE rounds. Aiming time at 2.3 seconds, which again is the same as the T49. But whereas the T49's accuracy with this gun is 0 0.40, this has got 0.38. Traverse speed is the same as the standard Bulldog at 56, as is the turret traverse at 50 degrees. But whereas the, oh, the view range is the same, sorry, and signal range. But like I say, whereas the Bulldog has 25 all around on the turret, this has 35 on the front, 25 on the sides and rear. Now, ammunition costs 350 for your HEP, 4000 for your high explosive anti-tank, and 255 each for your HE rounds. Um, skill wise, well, your typical light tank skills, uh, I've not really been in it very often, so the crew has suffered somewhat. I've got six cents, I'm training up camo, I'll be going for things like green thumb, um, muffled shot, there's another one and I can't think what it is, um, silent, maybe silent driving, I don't know, possibly even um, situational awareness trying to increase that view range equipment, I've just got, well, camo net, tank gun rammer, 
and binocular telescope. Um, I don't know. I think I'm quite happy with that, although I might swap the gun rammer out for maybe a vertical stabiliser. Um, but I, I play this as a passive scout, and I feel that's the role you have to take with this uh, for at least the first half of the match, is a passive scout. Not so much with the normal bulldog, but we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. So, we've covered uh, the gun. Oh, it's bonuses. 40% silver, 15% XP bonus. Now, uh, we've covered the gun, covered equipment, covered skills. Let's actually have a look at the armour itself and the modules. Right. Now, horsepower. 21.93 horsepower per tonne, which is only slightly better than the stock Bulldog. Now, the stock Bulldog has a 500 horsepower engine. This has got 510, fully upgraded, the uh, the normal Bulldog has 550. Now it doesn't seem like it'll make much of a difference, but like I said before, this has got more armour, so is a slightly heavier vehicle, so that does come into account. Um, 72.4 kilometres an hour top speed forward and 24 kilometres an hour backwards, which is really good, uh, and a 12% chance of fire uh, on the engine. Now, your concealment is 0.28, and that's for moving and stationary, so don't forget light tanks, keep it. And uh, your reload time is 6.3 seconds, and that's without any uh, well, any equipment or anything like that. Gun elevation, 20 degrees, and as you'd expect with an American vehicle, a very good 10 degrees of gun depression as well, which is superb. The tracks themselves, uh, like I say, 56 degrees on the hull, but with a slightly weaker engine, slightly heavier tank, it can feel a bit slower than the normal Bulldog. Uh, terrain resistance is a, a good though at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and 1.1. Turret have covered, like I say, 400 meter view range. The uh, radio is in the back. I had a brain fart then. I just couldn't think of what it was called. Radio is in the back of the turret in the bump. I've done it again. There's the engine. Big old block towards the back of the tank. So you hit the back of the tank, you're probably going to damage the engine. Ammunition blocks, well, they're basically the front half of the tank. Um, from the left-hand side of the tank itself, you've got more or less the whole space. Under the turret is ammo rack, and you can almost hit that ammo rack through the front of the tank, and especially through that bit as well. And then your crewman, well, commander up in his commander's cupola, gunner, loader, and I'm assuming somebody will double up as a radio operator, probably the commander, and you drive it down in the front there. Now, armor-wise, well, we know it's... Uh, not brilliant so you've got 1 to 20 now 19 on the back the top of the turret as well the whole top of the deck the tracks and the actual rear half of the hull itself uh, the sides of it 21 to 30 is the front sides of the hull all around the rest of the turret with the commander's hatch up until that front bit you can see the patches there around the gun mantle just either side and then 31 to 50 which will be your 35 mil that it lists actually extends over the uh, front of the turret there and covers the front of the tank. Now it doesn't sound a lot but that does add to the weight slightly so that does reduce the power to weight ratio um, so it's not quite as fast as, well it is top speed wise but not quite as mobile uh, as a fully upgraded Bulldog. Not by much but it's noticeable. But the 35mm of armour well, that's the difference between a 75 mil gun overmatching your armour and a 105 mil gun overmatching your armour. Now, I have had bounces off this from tanks with 90 mil guns because of the extreme angle on the, uh, the hull, or they've hit the side of the turret. Now, if that was a normal bulldog, uh, where they hit just at the front of the turret, so the uh, it was either the left or the right, I can't remember, but just at the side of the gun mantle. On a standard Bulldog with a 90mm gun, that would have overmatched and penetrated, whereas this, it did actually bounce because of the angle that was at it, so that can make a difference. Other than that, there's not really much to say about it, other than, basically, with it being a light tank and not having much armour, it doesn't matter where you hit it, um, generally, you are going to penetrate. With the Brazilian Bulldog, if you're facing it off, you know, try not to hit the gun mantle, unless you've got a 105mm gun or bigger, um, and try not to sort of hit that front side of the turret if you can help it because it is very well angled and you know there is the possibility that it could bounce but in general don't worry too much about it um, because you'll be able to penetrate this just about everywhere so uh, enough going on about it in the garage let's get into a match oh sorry uh, matchmaking it doesn't well it just gets you standard 
light tank at uh, matchmaking at tier 8 obviously it sees up to tier 10 and that's about it so now let's get into the match and see how it actually handles Right, so here we are for the first of the replays. It's Malinovka, it's a tier 9 battle, and it's an encounter. And I'm not... Well, these aren't the best matches. I'm a bit out of practice in light tanks at the minute. I've not been in... Uh, I've not really been in a light tank for a while, apart from the... Uh, well, the one two, the T127, but well, that's a tier 3, so it doesn't really count, and possibly the AMX 12T, but again, that plays it very differently. But, again, you should sort of see what it's capable of and uh, it does feel a bit sluggish sometimes like I say it's, it does have a, a slightly worse power to weight ratio than a fully upgraded bulldog and it, it's down to that extra armour and the, the smaller engine you know even though it's only a, a small difference it can uh, make quite a big one when it comes to acceleration and uh, I do feel that I mean, the Bulldog, you know, I've not had the normal Bulldog yet. I'm, you know, I'm going off what I've seen. I've, I've seen plenty of them nipping about. But it, it does feel a bit more sluggish than I expect the Bulldog. And, you know, I've been outrun by them and caught by them. By, you know, standard Bulldogs in this. But for me, with this tank, because it is quite a large tank, you know, some of the light tanks are quite small in profile or quite thin, you know, or quite low. Uh, this one is quite a chunky thing and with that slightly lower power to weight ratio um, that I, I just feel that you're better off passive scouting at the beginning of a match in this and especially with the gun you see it's not the gun that made me kind of regret buying this it's the actual tank itself the gun I could deal with I knew exactly what I was getting into with that and I knew I could make it work but I don't know uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about it. Like I say, it just sometimes feels a bit sluggish until it actually gets up to its top speed. Well, I have more luck passive scouting in it. And I managed to get to this position without being seen, so that's not too bad. I'm just going to sit here, resist the urge to fire. And the reason I say that you're kind of limited, like I say, I keep getting sidetracked to passive scouting at the beginning of the match with this, is down to the size of the tank, like I say, it's not very small, and the gun, um, unless you're willing to fire a hell of a lot of heat, you can't really take much on from the front, although you will splash them slightly, uh, you you know, if you've got a weak, you know, weak enough target, armour-wise, you can take them on from the front, but most of the stuff you'll come up against, you can't really take them on from the front with that 102mm of penetration, so you passive scout for a little bit, or this is how I do it anyway. And then towards the sort of later half of the match, when tanks are getting separated, getting damaged, I move in, you have to get around them. You know how some light tanks you can sort of go at them, ducking and weaving and firing at them. Um, you've got to get around them. You've got to get to the side. Uh, be careful not to put it into the tracks themselves, so you're going to have to aim carefully. And, and with the way that the the turret moves when you're looking through your, your gun view or your sniper view when you move your hull on the console is quite frustrating because it, it doesn't help when you're trying to get around a target and really aim precisely above the tracks or you just get around the rear of them and put one through the rear and with them being high explosive they do module damage as well so not only will you take off a, a chunk of health you'll more than likely injure crew members damage modules that sort of thing now I think I'd, I don't know, I kind of think I'd exhausted most of the spotting I could do from that point really, which is why I moved in. Managed to spot another couple, I think I took one out myself, and the bulldog got taken out. <laughs> that was a bit cheeky, in just taking that kill there. I thought that as I did it, you know, just after I pulled the trigger I thought that was a bit off of me really, I should have just let him burn to death for the other guy, but... Oh well, it, what's done is done. Now I'm going to try and move in on this ice three, and I'm going to wait till they get closer because, as you can see there, I shot, it hit the tracks, high explosive, just did the minimal amount of splash. But when I do get it through the back of the tank, it does a lot more damage. 
and yeah, it's kind of you got to play it really. Passive scout a bit at the beginning of the match, then move in, start getting round tanks, get into the rear of them, and start putting those uh, hep shells through the backside of those tanks. And now I'm going to try and move up onto the hill. I think we've got somebody up there. Oh no, they've just died. So I've got to be careful. I've got good gun depression though, so I can, you know, work this ridge line. Oh, we've got a T10. He's going to be tricky. He's got spaced armor down the side of his tank. As well as the tracks. So I'm going to have to be careful where I aim it. But at least doing a bit of splash damage. You know, I've damaged his tracks. I've reset the cap again. But you'll notice I've switched to heat rounds. But again, you've got to be careful with your heat rounds of angled armor, spaced armor, and tracks, just like you do with the HEP. Or, in fact, standard HE rounds. That was lucky. I just hit that bit of a bump in the ground and my gun raised up, but the uh, the shell dropped down anyway and hit him, so that was quite fortunate. And, you know, you've got to understand, with the Brazilian Bulldog, you are going to have to fire premium heat rounds. It, it's just a fact with it. You know, at some point, you are going to have to fire them, because there will be times where you just can't get round them, or you just need to put that shell into them and finish them off. Now, just... I think it bounced off the back of his turret, but that's the match. And not a bad little victory. Uh, decent amount of assisted damage. All right amount for myself as well. So yeah, not a not a bad round. Two thousand six hundred and forty-seven assisted and a thousand done myself. Now, like I say, I've not been in lights for a while. I am a bit out of practice, but I did try and get you the best footage I could with it, and and just to show you its sort of strengths and weaknesses a little bit. But coming top of the table, that's always nice. I uh, didn't find that many rounds though. Ten and out of those, ten hit, but only seven penetrated. But they all would have done at least a tiny bit of damage. Now, just two replays for this one. I've tried to keep it trimmed down a little bit. Um, the last one was a bit long, I think, the last review I did. So, um, like I say, I was getting the footage for this and the uh, M56 Scorpion. So it's just a couple of replays, but like I say, you should hopefully have seen, or by the end, hopefully, you know, maybe have seen all of its, uh, like, capabilities, shall we say. So another Tier 9 match. It's Highway, and it's another encounter battle. And while it's starting, and I'm just going to go and try and find a, a spotting position, uh, I'm going to ask you guys your advice uh, for once, or for a change. Should I say? Um, I bought the Auf Klarung's Panther. Uh, well, the Auf Klarung's Panzer Panther. Um, because it was in the store. It got removed from the game and turned into a premium. And uh, yeah, it was in the store and it, it wasn't too much. And I know a lot of people call it the uh, the awful Panther. But I thought, do you know what? I'm going to give it a go and uh, see how it handles. Now, I've been in it a couple of times. Um, I don't mind it, actually. It's, you know, it's alright. It's a bit odd having to get the gun over the side of the tank to get your full 10 degrees of gun depression. But it's workable, and I know it's a light tank, but it really doesn't seem to play like a light tank, so I just wondered if any of you guys kept your Auf Klarung's Panther. Um, and if you did, what equipment setup have you got on it? Uh, I was thinking, possibly, coated optics, maybe vents, and something like a vertical stabiliser. Possibly. Because it has got quite a decent rate of fire as it is. Um, but I'm just not too sure. So, uh, yeah, if you've still got your uh, Alphacol Panther or Alphaclorum's Panther, um, let me know what equipment you've got on and uh, how it works. I'm, yeah, I think I know how it plays. I sort of play it as a bit more of a support medium rather than a light tank, to be fair. Alright, I managed to get a shot on that guy as he was disappearing over the hill. We've got a Stereo meal popped up. Oh, if I can get through the side of him, that could do a bit of damage. No, a bit poorly aimed and a bit late there. And you'll notice I'm sounding a little bit bunged up still. I don't know what it is. It's not a cold. It just seems like I just feel bunged up. Hopefully that will disappear in a couple of days. Like I say, it's not a full-blown cold. I don't know what it is. Now, I did not lead the WZ-132 enough there. And I have been spotted. I should have pulled back a little bit sooner than that, to be honest. 
That was a bit risky staying up there. And there's a bounce off my turret. And uh, like I say, that's the difference between that 25 and 35 mil. It might only be 10 mil of armor, but it's the difference between a 75 mil gun overmatching your armor or a 105 mil gun overmatching your armor. And uh, overmatching for those of you that are new to the channel or you know haven't seen me uh, or heard me go on about it before. Um, what overmatching means is if something overmatches your armor, it doesn't matter what the angle of your armor, it will penetrate anyway. And the way it works is that if the gun shooting at your armor is three times or more, the uh, the caliber of the gun is three times or more the thickness of your armor, then it will overmatch. So that's why I say for 25 mil of armor. A 75 mil gun will overmatch and penetrate no matter the angle that it hits. Whereas normally, even you know, 70 degrees is an auto bounce or you know that sort of thing. Yeah, it wouldn't make a difference. But with that 35, it you know that extra 10 mil, you'd have to have a 105 mil gun to overmatch the front of the tank. Um, you know, depending on the angle, instead of the 75. So I did take a bounce there, which is one of the nice things about the Brazilian bulldog. And like I say. I've not really driven it much since I bought it because I, I was a bit disappointed with it. But obviously with being in it today to get the footage for the review, it, it has grown on me a little bit. I still think it... I mean, it's nipping along quite nicely now, but sometimes it just feels a bit sluggish for some reason. Now, I've taken a few hits. I did... Uh, take a bit of a risk getting across that field and took a couple of hits for my uh, well yeah for my trouble but that side of the river seems about clear so that's why I've come back across here not so much so if I can do anything about the town I was you know keeping an eye out for the tank destroyers on the map they're not popped up in the town so I made the assumption they were going to be up here somewhere up this way and I found the Sturry meal and they've not got much armor either, so my pep shells will go through there and hopefully should make quite a mess of his uh, internal workings. There he is, just wait for the aim. And this is why I w you know, could possibly say swap out the gun rammer that I've got on it and put maybe a vertical stabilizer on it, which I think would possibly be a better choice, but. I did have it set up more as a passive scout than an active and you know when you sat hiding nothing can see you, you have a bit more time to aim but I don't know I'm now thinking about possibly swapping it now I've got the uh, soft side and rear of that T28 but he's pulled back so that's why I'm going to move on and try and work my way down this way and that's how you need to try and play this, basically work your way around, get behind them, like you would in most light tanks, but some of them have the penetration to get through the front of a lot of the tanks they come up against. This doesn't, which is why you really have to position yourself properly. Now, a bit of a cock up here. I thought I had the back of that M103 originally, and it turns out I didn't. And I thought my HEP round would do enough damage well enough splash damage to actually uh, kill him if it you know if it didn't penetrate which originally I thought it would because I thought it had the rear but then I realised it had the front still thought I'd be able to splash him to death but it didn't work so that's why I pulled back and I'm now trying to work my way around on him but he's just died so I'm going to go for that T28 prototype oh T44 is just started to notice me but now he's dead and I should have at this point, you know, waited, turned around, gone back, but I didn't. And yeah, the T28 was waiting. So that's me done for that match. Now I'm just going to leave it to play out because that's basically it. But there you go, that's the M41B Brazilian Bulldog. You do have to know what you're getting into with the gun, but hopefully I've let you know that now so you'll be able to make a better decision. Um, like I say, I've not driven the, the proper Bulldog, but that does seem to have a slightly higher power to weight ratio. So, you know, this might feel a little bit sluggish compared to that. Um, 
but I don't know, like I say, I, I do kind of regret it. It's grown on me a little bit, but not enough, I don't think. But there you go, that's it, the Resilient Bulldog. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the review. I hope it's been able to help you make up your mind as to whether you'd actually like to buy that or whether it's one you'll skip and go for something else. Um, you know, I can imagine there are a lot of people that do well in them and really like them, but it's just not one of my favourites, I'm afraid. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to be yet. Um, we'll have to see what tomorrow brings. But as always, take care out there and I'll catch you next time. See you later.